Welcome back, baseball fans, to another eliminating video. We're eliminating the Boston Red Sox. What you are looking at, folks, is last year's stats. Uh, they were much better. I just wanted to show them to you again. Uh, the Red Sox were the top team in the American League as a number one seed, but they got bounced in the American League Championship Series by the Tigers. So they finished 28 and 14, 277 batting average, 267 team ERA. Where do I start? So much went right a year ago. There's Yaz with a 70 card, hitting 345, 12 and 34 with some stolen bases up there at the top. You know, John Kennedy, Reggie Smith hit over 300. Nice, nice. Fisk went to the All-Star game. Nice. Petroselli, um, his average was down with that because uh, we had a 69 card. It just didn't deliver like it normally would, but still a nice year. Uh, and, you know, typical Boston offense. 277 average, 68 bombs. It was the pitching that was a story a year ago, led by Sonny Siebert, 10 and 2, with uh, 306 ERA, uh, 106 innings. And if you look at his ERA, he's near the bottom with a 306. That's how good this team was. Mike Nagy, who was last, really was the number four starter, so he hardly pitched, only 46 innings. It was that Louis Tiant was seven and two, and uh, Roger Moret was six and three. Moret was magnificent in the rotation with a 177 ERA and a 114 whip. Tiant as well, the number five starter, Kuntz. They only had one guy who could pitch on three days rest, which was Siebert, which means Cal Kuntz was the swing starter, who was okay as well. Only needed 16 innings out of him. Gary Wagner set up Sparky Lyle in the back of the bullpen. Gary Wagner's brilliant as a setup man, 59 cent ERA. Sparky Lyle had six saves. He lost four games, though. Something about Red Sox closers losing games. Now, he lost four of them, 0-4. And that was probably the only bad mark in the whole chart here for the Red Sox. It was a magnificent year. Uh, getting past Baltimore in the American League East and looking like they were going to the World Series until the Red uh, the Tigers nipped them in the American League Championship Series. So they come back a year later and Baltimore's reloading, the Yankees are reloading, and frankly the whole American League East takes a step back. It is the Red Sox who do hold on and win the division uh, about five games, six games over 500. Then they uh, face the A's in a seeding round and lose to them and hold on, the, on to the two seed. Then after getting the bye, they would face the White Sox and lose four games to one. And really, um, looking at the stats, you see 22 and 20. So it's negative 12 games from a year ago. Yaz is still at the top of the chart there, 298 but he hit 345 a year ago. Add the two numbers together, you get around a 329 card, which is what he had. Mike Andrews had a nice year. That was the big story here. Kennedy and Smith both dropped about 20 points. Fisk about the same. Rico Petroselli went to the 1970 card and his average drops 30 points to 234. Um, Tommy Harper was brought in with a 70 card with 30 home runs on it. And just didn't do much with it really just five homers and just three stolen bases so not a lot of production for this Red Sox offense but it was still enough to get by a, a disappointing America League East where Boston and New York struggled now let's go to pitching so Sonny Siebert the ace a year ago all by himself the only guy who could pitch on three days rest is still the ace had a very similar year he had 100 innings last year 99 and two-thirds this year 379 ERA, not quite as good. 7-4 record, not quite as good. But Bill Lee and Marty Patton are added to the rotation as pitchers who can pitch on three days rest. Patton was okay, but didn't pitch enough, apparently. Only 50 innings with a 320 ERA. It was Bill Lee who had an unsightly 487 ERA and 165 whip with a 3-2 and two record. A lot of that was getting knocked around in the first inning, giving up like five runs in the first inning a few times, and then sticking it out and waiting for his Red Sox to bail him out, and sometimes they did. Um, he also pitched well in the postseason, so he had a real rough start to his time in the rotation. And uh, the other guy, Louis Tiant, also struggled. Three and five, this card is supposed to have an ERA below two, and his is 542. 
This set off a chain reaction where Roger Moret, who was starting last year, was pushed into the bullpen with that same card. He could not recreate the magic, pitching an inning in the 8th or ninth innings, trying to close games out. He got bombed to a 560 ERA. Gary Wagner was asked to fill Sparky Lyle's closer shoes. He couldn't do it. ERA of 5 with 5 losses. Did get 7 saves. Probably most of those were the easy saves. They added a rookie, John Curtis. He was awful. And Bobby Bolin missed some years. Older pitcher came back after a, uh, a nice showing in the 1960s. To come back with a 73 card. Didn't matter. And that is the state of the Red Sox. As we look at their card stack, it was a very disappointing finish to the Red Sox. So let's see. They're going to have some nice decisions to make with what they're going to do with their uh, 1970 cards. You've got to pull those eight out. And a lot of these are utility players or so forth. About a half and half, really. You got some big names in here, but also some average names. So they're going to have to decide how they manipulate these eight players. Let's take a look at the 12 guys who are coming back, though. They're going to split six hitters and six pitchers. So they're going to be pretty content with a pitching staff and only add two more dudes there. So not a good start versatility-wise as you have duplicate second baseman. You've got Mike Andrews and uh, Griffin. Now, and, uh, Andrews is actually a Chai Sock, but he was a Red Sox before that, and they held on to him. Two second basemen. Of course, you got Fisk catching. Kennedy uh, can move over to short. If you want to move Petroselli over to third, where, where Petroselli would be a two. He's a two, he's 37 to third. He played there all year. Moses is just Fisk's backup, and it doesn't matter who much backs up Fisk. And Larry Stahl was really just a left handed bat off the bench because they didn't have many left handed bats on this team, and he was also a defensive replacement for Tony Canigliaro. And Stahl actually had a decent year with the Padres, hitting 253 in half a season, so. Not a bad utility outfielder. Let's look at the pitching now. So Siebert, the good news is most of this rotation is coming back to redeem itself. This Siebert car, this is uh, was in the year in the league for three years and has always pitched well with this card. 16 and 10, 291 and 235 for the Sox. On three days rest as a starter eight. This card always pitches well, and he's going to come back one more year with it. Joined by Bill Lee as guys you can pitch on three days rest. And Bill Lee had a nice 1973 with that card. You got Tiant. And I think you have, I guess you don't have Marty Patton, do you? No, you Marty Patton's contract is up. Tiant in the three spot there. And this is the card that got bombed this year for, I don't know why it did. Look at the ERA, a 191 ERA and 179 innings. Only seven home runs as well in that span and you see he just destroys righties and uh, he was a Red Sox, he was with the Twins in 70 so that's your big three pitching, my goodness that would be a great big three then it gets kind of interesting after that so John Curtis was brought up with this card which is a decent card he could be your new number four starter with two lefties and two righties he uh, might pitch better coming out of the bullpen but you also have Roger Moret you got to decide what you're going to do with these guys. You have three left-handed pitchers in this team who can all are starter sevens or eights, Bill Lee. And two of them were asked to go to the bullpen this year, and they blew up. Moret and Curtis did not pitch well in the bullpen. And here's the Bob Boleyn card of 73. It's actually a decent card. It gets the righties out. So the Red Sox got to make some choices of what they do with their 1970 players. Okay, let's take a look at the tough choices the Red Sox are going to have to make with their eight players in 1970. Not necessarily this first guy. This will be an easy cut. It's Angel Bravo. Charlie Delta. Angel Bravo, short career from 69 to 71 as a pinch hitter for the Reds. 
Uh, he might have been in the 70 World Series. Um, yeah, 277 with his card. Did he get any? I got to look for the 70 Series. I'm just too curious now. Um, postseason batting in the World Series. Uh, 0 for 2. Okay. Well, there you go. And, a, and one at bat in the LCS against Pittsburgh. 0 for 3. Okay. At least I know. Um, so, in 71, does he play? He's got 73 plate appearances between the Padres and the Reds. And with it, he gets a 159. As a lefty uh, handed batter. So you know the split's not going to be good. If it exists, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist. So we're going to retire Angel Bravo. Let's go to Boston here. Angel Bravo will be retired. That's the first move they'll make. Now it gets a little bit more difficult as you get some classic Red Sox players with their contracts coming up, and one is Tony Canigliaro. Both of these guys are in the league right now uh, within the middle of this timeline. Billy was playing for the Rangers this past season. So Tony Canigliaro in 70 came back uh, and had a monster year with 36 home runs and an 822 OPS. Uh, in 71, he could qualify for waivers as a member of California. Uh, if they made his card with 292 plate appearances, they should have. Let's go check it out. California Angels, do we have a... Um, I don't see him there. Maybe he's an extra player for the Angels. Well, they did him a favor, really. He, he wasn't very good anyway, but they did not make his card. Ricky Clark, Billy Cohen, A. Johnson, and Maloney are your California extra, extra players. And when you look at, yeah, there are your infielders, outfielders, and catchers. There's no sign of Canigliaro. And we can confirm that all of 1971 was spent in California, which means his career is over as well. Well, that was a little disappointing. I thought we could get sneak him on waivers, but we cannot. So that's two retirees. Next up, Tommy Harper, and this was an interesting, we know he comes to the Red Sox, but we brought him in here earlier, trying to take advantage of his 1970 card. So let's take a peek here, Cincinnati Cleveland, so Seattle Pilot. He's an all-star from Milwaukee in 1970, and that's the card Boston won at, went, went out and got. 31 home runs, 296, and an 899 OPS, but uh, it did not translate. He had an okay year and not much more than that. So you see he is coming back to the Red Sox. And uh, he's got three or four years with them. So to make that trade worthwhile, he's of course a keeper. So keep in mind, we're going to we're gonna have to start counting Boston outfielders because they're going to have a million of them during this timeline. you got to make sure there's, there's a place for them all. I don't see a reason to export Tommy Harper, by the way. You know, like kicking him off the team. I mean, in 75, he plays for California and Oakland, but we're not into that timeline yet. And he's still a productive player for the Sox. Plus, I believe he can play a little bit of third base and second base in 71. So I don't want to kick a productive player off a team just because, uh, you know, there are other guys in the future that would take a, could take a spot and it's, who could possibly wait their turn. One guy who's not going to wait his turn is Rico Petroselli, who will just continue going on. He starts a little bit of lot losing production here. So again, 69 was a little ridiculous, folks. As an all-star, 297, 403, 589, 992 as a 2E16 shortstop, who I believe was a beast stealer. Maybe he wasn't a beast stealer. I can't remember what his, I think he was a B stealer, but he only stole three bases. I don't know why he would have been a B stealer. Maybe he wasn't. I must, must have not be remembering that correctly. All right, let's assume he's not. In 70, uh, he's still 29 homers, 103, and yeah, it's still a nice year. And in 71, it's still a nice year. Uh, he's coming back, of course. Uh, and you may want to move him over to third base if his, uh, you know, if he's better suited there than shortstop. Petroselli coming back. Now it's going to get tricky, folks, because we got Reggie Smith. Reggie Smith. This is really interesting because he is property of the Red Sox for most of this timeline. 
but this is really going to be a fun off season. And this is where Boston really has to use their noggin and come up with the best solution how to incorporate all the great outfielders in the Boston outfield and infield or first base. So Reggie Smith here. Here we go, folks. Let's go for a ride. He was an all-star in 69 for the Sox and 70. Pretty much the same thing. MVP votes. Uh, 895, 857. He'll be over 800 forever. <laughs> He'll be... I guess in 76 he was under 800 OPS, but you get the idea. Uh, he becomes a Cardinal in 1974, which would be the new year coming up. But, I want to remind you, three of the next four years would be on Boston. But, right now, the Cardinals and Red Sox will have a nice long discussion about what do you want to do? Do you want to bring in, do you want to send him to St. Louis in this offseason so he gets four years with his card. What's the best thing for the player? What's the best thing for the franchise? Plus, we can make up a trade that'll be different from the trade that uh, involved Reggie Smith. Because we, we know the result from history, so we can change it to make it beneficial for both teams if we need it. So remember, we have Rick Miller getting into the outfield. We have Dwight Evans getting into the outfield. We'll have Freddie Lynn in 1975, and then Jim Rice. I mean, you could you see the writing on the wall here that Boston should probably be proactive and forego these three seasons and consider uh, how much value Reggie has. And I'd ask for a king's ransom. And if the Cardinals fork it up, do it. So he's a definite keeper, but this is really going to be one of the bigger stories of the offseason. How much does the Cardinals willing to pay to get Reggie Smith now instead of waiting three more years to get him? And then we're only having him for one or two years. That's going to be a big story. It all depends on how St. Louis's keepers are looking. Plus the fact that St. Louis is in a tough division with the Reds and Pirates. They might need to take more risks and bring in bigger bats. If you put Reggie Smith on the Cardinals and give him like a six or seven year run, you might have a better chance of getting past the Reds and Pirates. So that is really an interesting discussion that we'll have a long time to figure out on cold winter nights in the hot stove league. So with that, it comes into the next player, and oh my goodness, yeah. We have to say goodbye to the 1970 card of Yastrzemski. It was absolutely stunning performance. Look at all these black numbers. Leads the planet in doing things. So, yeah, he has six black numbers in this year. You want to throw out the 162-game black number there and not count it. Uh, yeah, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six black numbers here. In 67, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, 1040 and 67, 1044 in the year we just played. But 23 stolen bases, folks. Yeah, 40 home runs. Magnificent. Four MVP votes. Lost out to Boog Pal, which is a little disappointing. So here we go with uh, Yaz. I don't want to spend a lot of time evaluating this. He just turned 30, but I don't really care. He's coming back. It's just a question of which year we're going to do. And it'll probably be 73 or 74. He's under 800 OPS and 71 and 2. So probably 3 or 4 will be the card that is selected. So quickly, the uh, Red Sox have four keepers. More incentive to move. Reggie Smith, if you find you have even more than four. The next guy, and this is a very clever guy too, Marty Patton. Interesting little migration for Marty. Very important player, believe it or not, in the early 70s as to where we put him, surprisingly. A lot of movement, young pitcher. Uh, Seattle Pilot, California Angels, Seattle Pilot, Milwaukee a couple years, Boston a couple years, and then Kansas City. Eventually, when he gets to Kansas City, he's going to be in the bullpen uh, when they start making those playoff runs in the late 70s. But he's still got some good starting years left in him. Just like Tommy Harper, he was taken away from the Brewers with his these stats in 1970. 
233 innings and a 117 whip. In 71, he's an all-star for those Brewers, but the Red Sox smartly made that move to get him. I think you gotta keep him, folks. Absolutely you gotta keep him, because you can even take this year, which is not even yours, it's a, red, it's a Brewer year, but even in 72 and 73, he pitches okay. So Patton is coming back. I am not moving off of him. As important as, if Boston gets good starting pitching, it's pretty much over for the American League. Because they can figure out, of course, an offense on the fly. It's not that big a deal. And now you kind of see a scenario where Reggie Smith has just played his way off the team with Harper, Petroselli, Yaz, and Patton, your keepers. So that's how Boston can better themselves in a blockbuster Reggie Smith deal. The last player is Gary Wagner. And he's had an up and down finish, and his career is over actually, folks. From 65 to 70, he was with the Phillies and with the Red Sox in 69 and 70. And that's about it. He, uh, his career ended in 1970 at age 30. So he, got a late, he was a late starter. He was 25 when he debuted. And there you go. 370 lifetime ERA. That's not bad. So Gary Wagner will be the other retiree. So they have five guys they want to keep. Three guys they have to retire. So they have to make some moves in the offseason. We know one of them might be Reggie Smith. They will, of course, if they put a couple guys on waivers and move one of these retirees to another ball club who needs a retiree. That's it for the review of the Boston Red Sox. Hope you're enjoying these elimination videos. And we'll see you next time.